I often get questions about the idea of the foot orthotic. There are a lot of people out there that believe that no one should need an orthotic, and if you're wearing an orthotic in your shoe, you are just covering up for the inadequacy of the foot or the foot strength. And that is true, in a sense. The foot is, inadequ is inadequate, but it's not an issue of strength, and it's not an issue of support. The, the, the orthotic is not being used to make up for a lack of strength. It's not being used to support the foot in the, way, in the context in which I have it. The context in which I have the orthotic is to return my abnormal foot, particularly on the left, because there is an, I was born with a genetic defect, for lack of a better word. It's called uh, metatarsis adductus. It just means it's the, the left foot has an extra curve to it, and it creates a really high arch. And, you, and this, is, this is the orthotic. Look how high that arch is. It's really, really high. Because of that high arch, my foot cannot go through heel strike, which is supination, arch down, which is pronation, and then toe off, which is resupination. I can't get into pronation through normal biomechanical means. I have to go get into a type of pronation through compensatory activity. And that compensatory activity is called turn the foot out, turn the tibia and the femur out, turn the hip out, and then push through. That will really screw up your life. That will destroy your back. That could lead to malocclusion. That could lead to asymmetries of the face because now your neck function is all thrown off. All your muscular function is thrown off because you can't go heel strike, supination, arch down, pronation, toe off, resupination, without altering your biomechanics. And that is the point of the orthotic. All the orthotic does is return my abnormal foot to a normal foot. So what it's doing is, it's lining up my big toe, my ankle, and my knee so they can all stay straight as I walk forward instead of having to do this. This is not an efficient way to walk. It's going to cause a lot of issues down the line. There is no amount of strengthening, stretching, massaging, anything that's going to change the structure of my left foot at 42 years of age. Maybe when you're young. If it had been diagnosed when I was young, maybe they could have done something about it, and they probably could have, but not at 42. So nothing's going to change. The only thing I can do is to put my foot on something that will align those joints so that I can push forward appropriately, so I don't have to compensate somewhere up the chain. So the two biggest issues outside of really deformities are feet that are too flat, which would be kind of ligamentous uh, looseness, and arches that are too high, which would be more of a tight foot. And, and you find they're rigid, they're tight, um, they're stiff. Flatter feet are a little, sometimes are a little bit more, um, you know, a little, a little looser. And they cannot establish that neutral position appropriately of, of the big toe, the arch, and the ankle. So they're, they either are not going to pronate appropriately or they're not going to resupinate appropriately to be able to push off through their big toe. And at both of those positions, that foot is unstable. So I'm gonna, you're going to see a picture right now. That is a picture of me squatting comfortably, relatively comfortably, on the grass, on the ground. But, and I have no shoes on. However, if I tried that same squat on my floor here, I would not be able to do it. Why? Because that ground, the natural ground, the grass, that is natural. It's bumpy. My brain feels the fact that it's filling my arch. This high arch that under normal circumstances can't touch the ground because appropriately, in a normal way, because it's too high, the ground takes care of that. The ground comes up to me. 
when I'm on natural ground, the dirt, the grass. When I'm on a flat floor, like concrete, a wood floor, tile like I have here, that's not there. So that creates an unstable foot. And when you have an unstable foot, your body has to create stability somewhere else and it's going to come somewhere up, up, or bu up above. So I can squat on uneven ground. Why? Because the uneven ground fills my arch and creates stability. Flat floors do not create that stability. The foot is very maneuverable, but on flat floors it doesn't get to go through that maneuverability. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty stuck into just straight. I mean, there's not much it can do because everything's so flat. And for a lot of people, that causes issues. And the only way to rectify that situation is it's not unnatural to have an orthotic. You're not, people say, or people tend to think, especially when they're into minimalist footwear, they tend to think that anytime you put a shoe on your foot or anything with an arch, uh, that's unnatural because humans didn't develop walking on with shoes on. That's true. However, they also didn't develop walking on tile floors and concrete all day. They weren't trudging, trudging around Manhattan all day in, in, with bare feet. They were on uneven ground, like where I am squatting comfortably. If I was living outside with my high arches, if I was living on, on uneven ground, I'd probably be okay, but that's not the life that I live. That's not the life I've ever lived, and I'm never going to live that life. So I have to figure out some way to bring that uneven ground into my life, and the only thing that does it is this. So that uneven ground aligns my joints a lot better than flat tile floors. Some people are always going to need that orthotic. If for some reason their muscle function changes and they no longer need the orthotic, great, get rid of it. But the orthotic, again, is not used to support the foot. Now, I'm, I can't say that's for every podiatrist's way of thinking, but the one that the person that I saw, his job, as he saw it, was to align the hinges, the big toe, the ankle, and the knee, so that I could progress straight forward without having to compensate somewhere further up the line. I lived that life from a very young age. My body started to break down at 13 years of age. Ears started to ring freshman year in high school. I had to give up pitching my freshman year in high school because my shoulder was in so much pain I couldn't throw the ball anymore. Uh, plantar fasciitis for four and a half years in my mid-20s. SI joint blowouts two, three, four times a year from the age of 19 until 35. Neck spasms. And there's probably even more that I can't even remember. And all that changed when I found PRI. Why? Because they explained exactly what was happening. And the facial asymmetries, which were, I mean, I'm still never going to be perfectly symmetrical because eventually your cranium does solidify. Those showed up when I was, what, five years of age? And I am now more symmetrical than I've been since before I was five. And the symmetries didn't really work themselves out ironically enough, until I started to make my own homemade orthotic. Because I knew my left foot couldn't hit the ground, and I knew how important pronation was, because that, when your foot does pronate appropriately, that's where your body can rest and expand. And so I got my face to shift when I was experimenting with my own home, homemade orthotic, which was not a long-term solution because it just wasn't good enough material. But now I have this, and life is good. So just to reiterate, this orthotic that I have is not to support the foot. It is to align my joints so I can mechanically move forward without compensation because that's what we have to do as human beings.